here's an example diagram of the hydrostatic skeleton as we talked about hydra it's a simple cnidarian <clears throat> and you can see if it contracts the muscles going lengthwise that will squinch it down making it fatter or if it contracts the muscles that go around circle like that will squeeze it make it skinnier and taller of course if it opens the mouth and lets fluid out it can <clears throat> get smaller still the most common thing for animals to have however is an exoskeleton <coughs> so this is a non-living tough layer on the outside <clears throat> this may be <clears throat> made of minerals such as calcium carbonate and say snails and clams or it could be a more organic rich one like in arthropods and arthropods and their relatives molt this outer skeleton from time to time associated with growth here's an example this is a sakina molting the adult is emerging out of the old larval skin there and <clears throat> then it will be ready to expand those wings and be ready for its adult stage there which it couldn't inside the old exoskeleton endoskeletons of course we have those we are chordates the chiderms things like starfish <coughs> sea urchins have internal skeletons uh, sponges characterly have internal skeletons uh, squid, there are a variety of things there. Different styles, these may be separate plates or more attached together. <coughs> Even within the chordates, we have some that are more bone, like ours, some that depend more on cartilage. Of course, we have cartilage, say, in our ears, <coughs> but some have largely cartilage skeletons. Sharks, for example, their skeletons are mostly cartilage. Our skeleton, we can recognize two parts, the axial, kind of the central part, skull, ribs, backbone, and appendicular, the arms, the legs. <clears throat> and, of course, all the different parts connecting together, <clears throat> flanges connected to the metatarsals, metatarsals connected to the tarsals, and so on. Okay. This works together with the muscular system, making the forces that are necessary to cause movement. <clears throat> this may be moving around, or it may be when we're moving something. But also we have many styles of internal motion <clears throat> that the muscles do. <clears throat> Grinding up our food in the digestive system moving stuff on through, getting the waste out, pumping the heart, <coughs> not just the heart, but also blood vessels can contract <coughs> different things there. Again, those key proteins, fibers, allow the muscles to move. <coughs> muscles characteristically are attached to tough structures known as tendons, which then attach to the bones on either side of a joint, <coughs> causing movement either to bring the bones together or away. I've said lots of times muscles contract, but we typically want to be able to move various ways and not just once. So muscles have to have something else. They can't stretch themselves. They can only shrink themselves. <clears throat> and so often what happens is we've got a pair of muscles working against each other more antagonistically. Very familiar example, we have <clears throat> the biceps to bend the arm, the triceps to straighten it back out again. So <clears throat> each way, one muscle is contracting and that pulls the bone in the other muscle. <clears throat> it's not always another muscle. Uh, you can have, say, a flexible tissue that can stretch instead of muscle pulls and then the tissue bends back, that sort of thing. Good.
the remote got a little buried there. There we go. Diagram version. Again, the bicep is contracting while the triceps is not. It will bend the arm <coughs> towards the biceps. Then the triceps can contract and bend it back the other way. How do we do this? No surprise. Good old ATP is our initial power source. <coughs> <coughs> Muscles to provide a little extra boost there on the ATP. <coughs> Use creatine phosphate. Phosphate there can give phosphate to build ATP. But again, that's something that gets used up in the muscles. It's not something we can store a huge amount, though a little bit relative to the ATP. <clears throat> because it's used in muscles, it's been popular as a supplement for athletes. Uh, how much it actually does you any good, what possible risk there might be, those are not very well documented. Now, realistically, it probably does you more good just to <coughs> do your exercise than to try to <coughs> use some sort of <coughs> supplement that's supposedly doing something for you. Another way that muscles can store energy, they can take glucose, those individual simple sugars, and build them up into glycogen. Glycogen, kind of like starch and plants, is a polysaccharide used for storing energy. And then when the muscle needs energy, it can break it down into the individual glucoses and use those in cellular respiration. <coughs> but if you're using your muscles a lot, you can use up the oxygen faster than blood can get more oxygen in there. <coughs> Without the oxygen, the mitochondria can't do their thing, and so you're stuck relying on fermentation instead, which gets a little bit of ATP out of your glucose molecule, whatever it is you're <coughs> putting into the respiration, but not very much. And in our muscles, it's making lactic acid <clears throat> which is not real nice, and your muscles start to get sore because they're building up lactic acid. They're trying to do stuff, and they don't have enough oxygen to keep going. Different muscles do things differently. Very familiar. <clears throat> for example, we have the muscles controlling our fingers. Good for very fine movement, not for heavy lifting. We've got big muscles in our legs, much better for trying to move something big, such as ourselves, <coughs> or lifting something. But you don't have great fine control. <coughs> if you've never tried, you could probably still guess, it would be a lot harder to try to sign your name with your toes. You don't have the same fine control as with your fingers. but different abilities there. So what type of muscle fibers do we have there? How many fibers are contracting at once? <clears throat> How much tension they can build up? Also, <clears throat> what sort of signal are they getting? Do we have the, eh, no, I kind of feel like strolling over there. Okay, that'll start to get my leg muscles moving, but that's very different from if the signal is right away. <coughs> so what sort of signal is coming from <coughs> the nerves? Also what condition? Are you in good shape or not? That affects things. And these are things that you can affect if you want to build up muscle ability for a particular purpose. <clears throat> Both aerobic and strength training play a role here. Aerobic training, those types of exercises will tend to build more blood vessel <coughs> supply to the muscles. So more capillaries, the little tiny blood vessels, <coughs> more mitochondria, able to process more sugar faster, make more ATP, <coughs> myoglobin, that's the protein that takes the oxygen from the blood and gets it on into the muscle. 
strength helps build um, more muscle fibers, more fill in per fiber, and that builds up bigger muscles. So then, <clears throat> again, that will help you with whatever you use that particular muscle for.